Travel consideration provided by... Ordinary tissues burn when Theo blows. So Dad bought Puffs Plus Lotion and rescued his nose. Puffs have more lotion and soothing softness to relieve. A nose in need deserves Puffs indeed. Okay, before we go, we have to talk about what's next for Brad. Mm. Get this, he's putting down his Oscar and grabbing a hammer. This is so cool. He's yeah. gonna appear on a new Property Brothers show and the brothers stopped by ET to exclusively tell us all about it. Brad Pitt is a new Property Brother? That's it, he's a Property Brother from another Who mother. Knew? We all have the same apps. Oh. Yeah, I think there are 10 there. Which is actually surprising, a lot of people don't know. Happening now. Testing has begun on a potential COVID-19 vaccine where the first dose was administered. Plus, Mayor Ron Nuremberg is saying there will be new guidelines for bars and restaurants in the city, plus those over the age of 65. A lot of people are using curbside on their way home to pick up dinner, but these days they may be seeing a lot more coming by. The people remember is that this is a pandemic. Um, it's to be taken seriously. Preparedness over panic. A city councilman who is now self-quarantining has a message for San Antonio. Minor shower activity on the radar screen this afternoon, but I'll be back to talk about our better rain chances coming down the line, along with our next cold front coming right up. We are heading into the spring allergy season. Is what you're suffering from really allergies or something more serious? The news at five starts right now. Social distancing shutdowns. Now there is word of a possible shot to stop coronavirus. As cases of COVID-19 continue to grow across the globe, the United States has taken its first step in testing an experimental vaccine. Today, the first dose given to a healthy volunteer in Seattle, Washington, part of a six week trial conducted by the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases. 45 participants will receive two injections of varying doses about a month apart to prove the vaccine is safe. Then more studies will take place to prove the vaccine is effective. Testing for that could take several months though. Meantime, we have just learned that the Alamo has now closed its doors as a response to new COVID-19 guidelines. The news came just hours after we learned that a doctor with University Hospital has tested positive for the virus. It is the latest travel related case in Bear County. Meanwhile, differing guidelines from simultaneous news conferences this afternoon as the governor and mayor were announcing plans to fight COVID-19 here in San Antonio and in Texas, including restrictions for mass gatherings. President Trump announcing his own recommendations from the White House. Garrett to start. What are local officials doing right now as we speak? Well, local officials held a news conference here at the Emergency Operations Center. Besides the governor and the mayor, there were other local and state officials laying out how they're planning on fighting the virus here in San Antonio. Now, the latest is the mayor says he is issuing a new public health emergency declaration that would limit crowds to less than 50 people, a considerable drop from the previous guideline of 500. However, hospitals, churches and restaurants would be exempt from that prohibition, he said. But the restaurants and other and other establishments would get guidelines on how to how to help prevent the spread of the virus through taking precautions on things like occupancy, spacing of tables and emphasizing takeout and delivery. The mayor emphasized afterwards that this could all change again, saying he'll base his decisions on ratcheting up restrictions based on what the CDC says. The way we stay ahead of this and prevent, uh, delay, and ultimately contain this disease is to make sure that we're doing everything by, uh, in accordance with the health officials, the health authority, uh, making sure that uh, our, our response is um, about the health of our and safety of our public, uh, and that's the bottom line. At the same time the mayor was announcing his plans, President Trump was announcing more stringent recommendations from the White House. He said his administration is recommending to avoid gatherings of more than 10 people and avoid discretionary travel and avoid eating in bars, restaurants and public food courts. Now we have yet to see the final copy of the mayor's emergency declaration, nor have we seen President Trump's recommendations updated on the CDC website. Coming up at 6 o'clock, hear more about what's being done about testing here in San Antonio and Texas at large and who could be eligible to get one. Live outside the Emergency Operations Center, I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News.
As Garrett just alluded, bars and restaurants have been holding their collective breaths. They've been worried that they'd have to shut down temporarily in order to avoid potentially spreading the coronavirus. To avoid the stampede at grocery stores, many were resorting to picking up takeout food or meal deliveries. There's also 1.3 million employees who, according to the Texas Restaurant Association, work in the state's more than 55,000 restaurants. Jesse de Goyado paid a visit to one that's trying hard to keep its workers employed. Aldacos in Stone Oak already has spaced out its dining tables to promote social distancing, asking employees daily if they're feeling okay, sending home any who aren't. As always, hand sanitizer at the ready, all in an effort to avoid the worst case scenario, being temporarily shut down. That will be definitely devastating, but I will find a way how to retain my staff. Encouraging news for devoted staff like Gina Torres, who does whatever needs to be done around the restaurant. She and some of her co-workers, Torres says, need the paychecks. We have bills, we have rent, we have electricity, phones. So how is that gonna be taken care of if we're out of work? So, yeah, it's, it's a very scary situation. Yet there are customers like this woman who just came to buy flour tortillas for her lunch at home. She'd already been to other local businesses. Hoping that they'll be able to stay open and not um, be uh, overly affected by what's happening right now. Restaurant owners like Aldaco believe online pickup, home delivery services, and curbside pickup at least would help keep people on the job. We can adapt to anything else. I can downsize, I can buckle down. Hearing that other customers are shying away from dine-in, this customer says he's happy doing curbside instead. Curbside pickup right now, it's perfect for what you need to do, you know? Don't have to go in, they bring out your food, you just pay in your car, and it's really simple, you're on your way. Well, take out, pick up, and now as much as possible what's being called zero contact. But the goal is the same, to minimize the risk to customers and to those buying, certainly those buying, preparing, and perhaps serving those meals. The Texas Rest Restaurant Association says those are ways that are best to support its customers and also to support one of the state's biggest employers. North of downtown, Jesse De Guayado, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jesse. Don't panic. A panic demic could be worse than a pandemic. That's the message a San Antonio City Councilman, who is now self-quarantining, wants to convey to the rest of the city. Max Massey spoke with District 8 Councilman Manny Palaez about what led to his decision and his plan going forward. I'm doing this out of an abundance precaution to keep my neighbors, my co-workers, and my parents from getting sick. Less than 24 hours ago, Councilman Manny Polias and his family were in Colombia, South America, on a vacation. My family is from there, and uh, my grandmother um, is uh, still alive and with us, and so uh, I have an uncle there, and um, we have uh, the family has a ranch there, and so uh, we go every few years to go chicken on my, my very elderly grandmother and uh, go relax in the ranch. And upon returning, he saw a directive put out by the city manager instructing city employees coming home from international travel to self-quarantine. So, Councilman Plias, his wife, his children, and his dog acted accordingly. And I decided that um, the right thing to do would to subject myself to the spirit of that order. And so, um, I made the decision that I'd quarantine then. But he wants the Alamo City to take a deep breath and respond to this situation in a calm manner. We have a choice to be the best community um, and to show uh, what it is that community is all about, or we can be that community that freaks out, right? And I'm asking folks, let's not be that latter community. As for the next 14 days, the councilman says he and his family are prepared. We're stocked up on movies and video games and all that. Uh, my kids are gonna be just fine, but um, I'm, I've sort of carved out this small corner of the house uh, as a work zone. And the city councilman tells me one of San Antonio's biggest strengths is our preparedness, our military center, our medical centers, and of course our biotech industry. So if there was somewhere that you'd want to be during a pandemic, it would be here in the Alamo City. Reporting Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. While the city is asking people to stay home as much as possible via taking extra steps to make sure that those who need a ride to work, need to go to the doctor, or even make the trip to the grocery store are safe. VIA says seats, rails, and handles on its buses, buses and vans and in its facilities are all being regularly disinfected. They say restrooms are being cleaned three times a day to reduce the risk of infection. 
Precautionary measures like what VIA in the city are doing are being taken all across the country. More than 30 states have now closed public schools and more and more places are issuing sweeping closures of restaurants and bars too. ABC's Trevor Alt has the latest from New York. Across the country, dramatic actions are being taken in a desperate effort to slow the spread of the novel coronavirus. Even more states closing public schools. More than 30 million students kept at home, while full states like Ohio and Illinois and major cities like Denver and New York City are outright banning dining inside restaurants and bars. This state is doing this, this state is doing this, this city is doing this. Uh, it's chaos. Uh, I think it actually fee it feeds the feeling that uh, the country's out of control. And as the number of confirmed cases rises in America, the medical community is only hoping to keep up with rapidly increasing demand. More states like Florida introducing drive through testing facilities, ventilator manufacturers attempting to ramp up production during the pandemic, while concern is growing that care providers and hospitals are running out of masks. Medical officials urging other professions like dentists, painters, and construction workers to drop off their masks at local hospitals. Globally, Europe has become the new epicenter for the crisis. Italy reported its death toll has surpassed 2,000, with hundreds more dying from the COVID-19 virus today, despite a total countrywide shutdown. Here in North America, Canada has now closed off its borders to foreign nationals, though Americans are exempt for now. These measures will help save lives. The U.S. has now had more than 70 deaths caused by COVID-19, the majority of them in Washington state. That state and New York on opposite ends of the country have the most cases in the U.S. right now. Trevor Alt, ABC News, New York. Back here at home, Governor Greg Abbott has waived state requirements for the STAR test this academic year. He's asking the Department of Education to waive federal testing requirements as well. All San Antonio school districts have extended spring break this week. Abbott said the Texas Education Agency working to develop an at-home curriculum. And while classes are canceled and students are home, several districts are making sure kids aren't going hungry. Today, the first day, students and families picked up free curbside meals. We spoke with parents at Stahl Elementary in the north side, or excuse me, in the northeast ISD, where some of those meals were handed out today. I'm exceptionally grateful that that's one less thing I have to worry about and they're excited to make it an adventure so it's a reason to picnic in the front yard. Again, if you had have kids staying home another week, don't forget a lot of San Antonio area school districts are still providing the curbside meal service. Right now on KSAT.com we have links to which schools are offering the services, which students qualify and of course as we separate COVID fact from fiction, you can find all our COVID-19 coverage on ksat.com slash coronavirus. Four states preparing to hold primaries tomorrow, but as the coronavirus crisis casts a shadow over the Democratic race, some are wondering if the elections will be safe. Whitney Wilde is in Washington to explain all this. In any other political cycle, the battle between Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders would dominate headlines. Candidates would be out shaking hands and holding rallies, all to get in front of the most voters. But the world has changed because of coronavirus. We bring many thousands of people out to our rallies. I enjoy it very much. Uh, we're not doing that right now. I wash my hands God knows how many times a day with hot water and soap. Election officials in Arizona, Florida and Illinois vow to hold their primaries as scheduled on Tuesday. Many people concerned about coronavirus lined up to vote early. I just don't want to get caught up in all the craziness with the virus and all the crowds and I want to make sure that I get my vote in. Monday, Ohio's governor recommended moving the primary scheduled for Tuesday to June. Already two other states Louisiana and Georgia postponed their primaries. I've been to the grocery store. I saw the empty shelves. So it's probably the best thing to do right now. Delaying the vote is a move Sanders agrees with. Well, I'm thinking about some of the elderly people sitting behind the desks, registering people, doing all that stuff. Does not make a lot of sense. 
I'm not sure that it does. Election workers on Tuesday will wear gloves. Voting machines will be cleaned and sanitized, and election sites have moved away from retirement communities. All efforts to ensure the voting population is safe. We are well now. We want to have our votes, whether we're alive or dead. In Washington, I'm Whitney Wild. Still ahead at five, pollen season has arrived. But before you reach for antihistamines, you probably should make sure your sneezing, sniffling, and watery eyes aren't anything more serious. The main difference between allergies and an illness, we've got that next. It is that time of year, the sneezing, the sniffling, the watering eyes. We are headed into spring allergy season. But if your seasonal allergies continue through summer and into fall, 12 on your size, Marilyn Moore, it says what you're suffering from may not be allergy symptoms at all. I don't get much relief year round. I'm constantly treating from sort of January to December. Visit the allergy aisle a lot? A 2018 study found that 37% of people who bought over-the-counter allergy medication didn't have an allergy diagnosis from their doctor. So what if they actually have something else going on? In some cases, symptoms like sneezing, a stuffy nose, aren't actually caused by allergies. They're caused by something called non-allergic rhinitis. Non-allergic rhinitis is triggered by by non-seasonal things like food, alcohol, odors, smoke, perfume, pollution, medication, and even quick changes in the weather. Symptoms often look like those of allergies, congestion, runny nose, and sneezing, but without the itchy eyes and sore throat. Don't use any aerosols. Um, I don't use perfume. I don't use hairspray um, because I do find any of those will trigger me to repeat it sneezing. Outdoor allergies usually start around February or March, and they can last until about October or November. Plus, around here, there's cedar in winter. If you're not sure what you're experiencing, a trip to the doctor for an allergy test may be in order. And if non-allergic rhinitis is the cause of your suffering, an allergist can prescribe relief. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. <clears throat> And as we take a live, you know, look on this double screen that you usually don't get to see, notice yeah. we are social distancing here. That's yeah. what all we're doing. Is, we still is, like each yeah, other. Exactly. We didn't but, have a falling uh, out or anything. <laughs> I love y'all like extended family, but I'm still going to keep my six feet from all right, you. Good. Okay. You know, <laughs> I think, we're fine I think with this that. is good because we're, we're, we're living like we're preaching. We're telling everyone else to do this. So yep. there you go. So here we are, but we can still bring you the Best information here in South Texas. So let's chat about your weather. We have a lot to talk about from the good rainfall we had last night. I know not everybody got it, but that was west of town and in the hill country and east even more rain chances ahead. So here's a look at who really cashed in and the real winners of that rain. Valverde County, Edwards County, Kinney County, and you go through the hill country to the Edwards Plateau. Good accumulations. Up in northern Kinney County, about an inch and a half. Del Rio, about 1.6. Now, in Warren's backyard, our weather watcher in Del Rio, he had about 1.6 as well. Make it to Pipe Creek, and that's when it started to fizzle out. We only had 15 hundredths of an inch, and very similar in Kerrville. Around San Antonio, a trace. And Stinson picked up two hundredths of an inch. So the real winners here were parts of the Hill Country and Del Rio, Valverde County. Right now, we just have some clouds out there uh, where we had the rainfall last night. Otherwise, a few little... Coastal showers popping up. Victoria County, even up into Lavaca County. Check out Hallettsville. Looks like you have a brief little shower moving into town right now, but don't expect it to amount to a whole lot. These are pretty insignificant showers, agriculturally insignificant. Otherwise, a good amount of cloud cover out there with some breaks in the clouds and a few peaks of sun. So let's talk about our overall pattern. It's a similar setup to what we had a good portion of last week with this southwesterly flow coming off the Pacific up above us. And a real wound up upper level low just off the California coastline looks very similar to last week's pattern, doesn't it? Well, we do expect a different result later this week compared to what we had last go around. So the real moisture and energy that's over California. They're getting just dumped on right now with rain and higher elevation snow. Well, this upper disturbance, once that crosses over the Rockies later this week, it's going to develop a strong cold front here at the ground and that cold front is going to hit us on Friday, and that should help to boost our rain chances. We're looking at 20% Tuesday and Wednesday, 
Thursday still isolated, not really good chances of rain until we get into Friday. Saturday is when we're expecting more widespread activity in terms of the rainfall. And I do want to point out farther west and in the hill country tomorrow night. I think you've got a decent shot. Right now we're in the 70s, even some 80s farther southwest of town. Dew points there in the 60s, so we're feeling the mugginess. But when that cold front hits, look at that drop in the humidity by this by Friday and into the upcoming weekend. So big changes with this cold front uh, coming down the line. As for this evening, Muggy southeasterly breeze 5 to 15 becoming foggy later tonight and we'll start the day tomorrow with fog and drizzle at 66 then mostly cloudy and 80 for the high temperature and again just some isolated rain chances except for Tuesday night west of town and then we get into Friday. Look what happens to those temperatures Friday into the weekend highs in the 50s with some areas of rain. Look at that. Some changes to talk about. Wow, big changes. A lot to watch in that department for sure. Well, I'm glad that the Cowboys and the Texans gave Greg Simmons something to talk about. Today, <laughs> I was worried it I was going to be a slow sports You're, day. It's you been, may need to go on vacation. It's been anything but, though, slow. And what's strange, that we thought the Cowboys would be the big story, yeah. not this trade with the Texans that everybody is questioning. When we come back here, Dak is hit with a franchise tag, and the Spurs Sports Entertainment employees will continue to be paid. They got their latest result, resolution of what is happening with the coronavirus coming up next. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. The Dallas Cowboys have placed a franchise tag on their star quarterback, Dak Prescott, after being unable to come to an agreement on a new long-term contract. They will pay him roughly $33 million next season if they cannot reach an agreement on a new long-term deal by July 15th. By doing so today, the Cowboys beat the deadline of noon, and that keeps Prescott and his representatives from talking to any other team during the free agent period. This is the fourth time the Cowboys have used a franchise tag, but it's the first time on their quarterback. The most recent was 2018 when they used it on Demarcus Lawrence for he agreed to a five-year, $105 million deal. The Dallas Cowboys have also been unable to get a long-term deal done with Amari Cooper, who is now a free agent, according to the Fort Worth Star-Telegram. That came about when the NFL players narrowly approved the new collective bargaining agreement with the owners over the weekend that will feature a 17th regular season game beginning in 2021. As part of the new agreement, the transition tag is no longer available, which the Cowboys were hoping to use on Amari Cooper, forcing today's action. Not only does the new CBA increase the regular season games, it also adds playoff games and increases the amount of revenue to the players from 47 to 48 and a half percent. Here's a look at the top five changes in the new CBA. Of course, the biggest is the 17th game in the regular season starting in 2021, expanding the playoff field from 12 to 14 teams. Game week rosters increase from 53 to 55. Game day rosters from 46 to 48. Practice squads players increase from 10 to 12 players in their 12 to 14 players in 2021. The players share the revenue increases from 47 to 48 and a half percent. Our San Antonio Spurs are supposed to play the Memphis Grizzlies tonight at the AT&T Center. Said, like the rest of the NBA, they're in limbo waiting to see if or when they will resume play. But over the weekend, the CDC came out with a new recommendation that could push the restart of the NBA season all the way into June. NBA Commissioner Adam Silver had originally said the hiatus would last at least 30 days after Jazz Center Rudy Gorbert tested positive for the COVID-19. But now the CDC is recommending that gatherings of 50 or more be prevented for at least the next eight weeks. Now, instead of April the 10th, we're now talking about going well into May with NBA owners believing June would be the earliest to start for playing again. And if they do so, it would be without fans. Spurs Sports and Entertainment has announced the formation of a fund totaling over $500,000 that will ensure the organization's part-time employees will be paid through the end of the Spurs season and the Rampage season as well, even if they don't play again. That announcement made this morning by SSNE Chairman Peter J. Holt. More on that coming up at 6 and more news in just a moment.